it's quite a serious issue, actually. Um, as we all know, the arts is underfunded. And in the visual arts, we were very worried at a certain point in time, that was about 10 years ago, that, in fact, it's longer, come to think of it. Yeah, it's nearly, it is 10 years ago, um, that the visual arts, the funding of the visual arts was really diminishing in value as the uh, field itself was growing and burgeoning and there were huge opportunities that we weren't able to take advantage of. So what happened was a sequence of things. First we undertook a research project in partnership with a heap of universities We're using an Australia, um, Australian research grant and after three years of work we had the um, evidence to then go into BAT to say the visual arts is in dire need of new funding and after a lot of lobbying and exerting of influence over um, a period of about a year we eventually succeeded in persuading the government that an inquiry was necessary and the Meyer inquiry as it was known because it was headed by Rupert Meyer um, was undertaken. Um, we kept on lobbying during that process and finally what we succeeded in getting was an increase in funding of $12 million a year. So it was a very major injection of new funding into the sector and that's been sustained over, these, over the last uh, 10 years. To be honest, I wanted to be an artist. Um, but my very sensible parents said that's not a profession that's going to earn you an income and make a, give you a stable and secure life. And so they sort of steered my artistic interests towards architecture. But I'd always had this niggling feeling in the back of my soul that what I really wanted to do was the kind of creative things that artists do. So gradually I moved closer and closer to working with artists and that led me to undertake the work that I'm doing now. So although I'm not an artist, I feel as though I, I use that kind of creative urge, that creative impetus in the kind of work that I'm doing now. The thing that really gets under my skin is the way that artists are treated in Australia. And I know that around the world um, artists uh, have very varying fortunes, but in Australia artists really are not respected in the way that I think they should be. And, and their work isn't well understood. So what really gets me on my soapbox is, is artists' rights. You know, that artists really have a right to be, um, to be honoured for the kinds of um, richness that they bring to the Australian community and to our cultural life. Well, I think it's something that's already underway. There are a couple of things, actually. One is the national curriculum for schools, and arts is one of the areas that's going to be mandated as part of the new national curriculum. And I think that the opportunity there is that if every child gets an arts education, and hopefully it's going to be a good one, because that's the real challenge, making sure it's going to be a really good, rich arts education, not just tokenism. But if that really happened, then I think that um, the community would be transformed, that our lives would be enriched and people would just get much more out of life. So it's not only about the arts curriculum per se, although that's part of the story, but it's also making sure that teachers are well prepared to be able to deliver a really rich and, and in-depth arts curriculum and that they have really good resources to be able to do that and that there are artists who are actually in the schools through something like the Artists in Schools program, where kids can actually have the experience of working with somebody whose ideas are lateral, you know, who's thinking outside the square. And one of the reasons that that's important is not only that there are, I think we're increasingly recognising that um, arts literacies are as important as, um, as text literacy, um, but also that it gives um, young people the opportunity to express their own ideas, not just respond to other, other people's ideas. And we're in the age of interactivity, so um, I would prefer to see kids being school skilled in being effective in their interaction and to be intelligent in their interactivity. And I think that uh, a good arts education would enable them to do that. A lot of the role of the job that I do is, is advocacy and lobbying and I think that I've gradually learned to be a bit more diplomatic 
and a bit and to hold my fire a bit and to find the circuitous route of saying what it is that I need to say and do what I need to do. So in my younger days I think I was a bit gung-ho. Um, I wanted things to change fast and I was impatient but I've learned restraint. Thank <laughs> you.